So uh, let me uh, describe a little bit about the work that we are doing. And I think many of you are already familiar with uh, the orchestration part. So the work today, and uh, I will talk about the, uh, especially the uh, ONAP and the Open Networking Organization platform and how it supports orchestrating the different the VNF workloads and applications into multiple different backend clouds. And so I'll simply let me talk about the uh, three different areas. First is the ONAP, the uh, Beijing release architecture and uh, overview about the different components, especially major components that are involved in the um, orchestration part. And secondly, and how this architecture is aligned with the long-term target architecture and what are the principles that we are taking. And uh, the last is the uh, kind of uh, the steps and how to orchestrate a workload or a VNF into the uh, different type of the clouds. Um, here is um, the uh, ONAP Beijing target architecture. So this architecture was the uh, finalized in March and it was the approved by uh, ONAP TSC on March the 2nd. And so the ONAP architecture's basic design principle is that it's divided into two different the, uh, uh, major areas. One is the, called the uh, design time, the uh, 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 component, and the other one is runtime, the environment. And the design time environment, is, you can see on the your left hand side, it's the, um, the environment for the users to design the service, to onboard different VNFs, onboard different type of artifacts, and also to create the uh, different policies in order for their runtime environment to be able to uh, instantiate the service and to do the lifecycle management of different uh, part of VNF and services itself, and also how to use the closed loop uh, the automation management and for the uh, do the uh, policy based the uh, orchestration closed loop operations, and so the design time the artifacts, especially represented with the NSD, the network service descriptor, will be fed into the uh, runtime and for the uh, runtime environment to be able to um, orchestrate these the workloads into the different the, uh, uh, um, the, uh, the infrastructure, and uh, on the runtime. And uh, there are different the, uh, components, and the most important part here, and from an orchestration perspective, is called a service orchestrator. And the service orchestrator is so basically it's a workflow engine, right? And so basically it takes the uh, artifacts and uh, uh, the design time, the service, into the service orchestrator, and uh, to decompose the uh, different NSD with into the uh, the child NSD because the NSD is nested NSD, and uh, uh, also decompose the uh, NSD into the uh, different VNF and the networks that are connecting different VNFs itself, and uh, um, also uh, decompose this VNF into the basic deployment the uh, uh, unit, and typically it's the uh, the video the virtual deployment unit or the or sometimes it's called a VF module depends on how you uh, different type of term terminology you're using. And, uh, and there is another important component it's called N the AI, the available and the active the inventory. And basically, it's a database which store all the different type of the uh, uh, runtime informations and also the instance of different backend clouds and uh, some other relevant informations to be able to support the uh, uh, service orchestration and also the optimization and to find the uh, the best the uh, location. It's called homing to find the best uh, site and also the um, best capacity that meets. Um, the VNF, the uh, requirement in order to um, inform the, the SO to work with the other components to deploy this VNF into the uh, appropriate, the best match, the uh, uh, infrastructure cloud. And there is also uh, different components called a DCAE, the data collection, analytics, and events. And uh, what it does is basically it deploys different DCAE collector and uh, into the uh, uh, infrastructure of the cloud, and including in the bare metal, in the VM, and also in the uh, VNF itself, and to monitor the runtime status, for example, the performance, for example, the utilization, and, and uh, some other logging information, the metrics, and it will be collected and feedback to the other system. And uh, as I mentioned, in the design time, user can design the different policies. And based on policies and uh, the events that we um, fed into the system, and uh, should do the uh, analytics. And one of the important components called HOMES, so basically HOMES, what HOMES does is, uh, is root cause the analysis and to correlate different type of events and find out what the real, real uh, root cause of the problem is so that the uh, policy engine can trigger the uh, relative the actions in order to either, for example, the auto scaling or the healing about the VNF and based on the status and the events that's been triggered and to support the, um, 
the VNF operations and service operations. So the, it's, it's the policy framework and uh, the DCIE are kind of um, correlated and work together. And on the other hand, the one important part is called MSB, the microservice bus, and uh, also the data movement as a service platform, and uh, which basically provides the, uh, uh, the uh, messaging the, as a bus or the uh, data uh, uh, bus so that all the different components will be able to interact with each other. And one of the principles is that all the, of the uh, components are microservice based. And so the microservice bus will be able to register and all the different components of microservice and also can be di discovered by other c clients that will be able to use these microservices to do these uh, uh, actions. For example, um, different cloud instance may register itself in the NAI and using the NAI, the uh, uh, RESTful URL of the microservice to register the cloud instance in the uh, inventory. And uh, so um, there is also the different other uh, controllers like the application controllers, Verve controllers, SDN controllers, and we're basically uh, doing the uh, lifecycle management functions and SDN the uh, creating the uh, uh, the networks and uh, in data center networks and also the uh, intra data center networks and to work together. But eventually, and all those after the, for example, the SO work with the uh, uh, the homing and NAI services and find the best. And the uh, site, and it will call the uh, multi bin layer, and the multi bin has a broker layer, and which basically handles API and proxy those APIs and to the, uh, the each specific plugins for the different clouds. For example, the uh, cloud plugin could be the vanilla OpenStack, could be the Azure, could be the AWS, or Kubernetes, or the different type of infrastructure. So the, uh, the, all the plugins will interact with Vim, the virtualized infrastructure manager, in order to uh, actually the deploy and also managing the uh, uh, life cycles of um, the VNF different the, uh, workloads, we call the workloads. And at the bottom will be the different type of the uh, infrastructure cloud that we supported and running the uh, uh, OMA itself. And okay, so um, the architecture was designed as a long-term target architecture, right? And so there are three principles that the ONAP is um, taking into consideration in designing this architecture. And one is modular, and second is market service, and the third one is the model driven. So modular means that we use the, uh, the standard APIs to interact and with each different the, uh, components, and it's for the better consistency within the uh, different the component itself, and we document and develop those APIs in Swagger, and also align those interfaces and with industry standards and the work with, for example, those Etsy and uh, other standards bodies and to make sure that the APIs and uh, the best practices will be well aligned with object models that were defined in the uh, Etsy. And the microservice based, and that is quite obvious, right? All the components were designed as a microservice, which is on the RESTful API components, the operations, and sometimes the different component has its own local database for the, uh, and the fast processing and the, of, the, of uh, local and data storage and for uh, processing those uh, functions and so to support its clients on a, a microservice level. And uh, there's another component, and I uh, didn't mention, but here it's uh, called the ONAP Operation Manager. So basically, Operation Managers deploy ONAP itself. So it's, it's basically it's a, using the OOM is able to deploy ONAP into the, uh, for example, Kubernetes cluster and the monitors and manage life cycle of ONAP itself. And but it's not a, a monitoring the uh, the uh, workloads of the VNF, but o, but ONAP environment itself. And so, for example, using OM for onboarding and for instantiating and support different uh, ONAP components. So basically, just using ONAP to deploy ONAP. And uh, can register the uh, different components with the microservice bus, as I just mentioned, and uh, also the microservice best practice, for example, separate the data from the uh, operations and from the different components, et cetera. And we use the common, the, uh, the key value storage and uh, to uh, ensure the data consistency. And the model driven means that we are aligned with the different the data models from the uh, 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 the RES modeling subcommittee and uh, on the TSC in the ONAP. And so they are also working with the extensible the SDOs on the outside world and to um, as appropriate to define the appropriate data models and from the top bottom data models such as the uh, NSD level, video level to the uh, bottom developer models, for example, the infrastructure capacity model for the different clouds, which will be, uh, uh, um, it's not a it's not strictly the common the superset or subset of the uh, different infrastructures, but based on the need that's driven by the what's really required from ONAP operation perspective, the data sets, and uh, um, combining those the data sets based on requirement for ONAP and to uh, integrate the, uh, all those data models together. 
And uh, last but not least, and we have the external API and external system registration in order for the own app to be able to be used by external systems. For example, we have external API gateway and the external service gateway, and so that external systems can use the own app services such as the service onboarding, the service inventory, and service the uh, ordering, etc. Those type of services that are uh, exposed by the uh, own app. Um, so try to be quick because we don't have any time. <laughs> so here is the architecture, and basically that's the flow that the, uh, uh, how the um, OMAP and different components work together to orchestrate the uh, uh, VNF into the multiple clouds. And assuming that at design time, and uh, the uh, uh, users already onboard all the different the, uh, um, artifacts and the VNF into the, uh, 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 the service catalog. And so the first step, right, they give the user give the service instantiation request to a service orchestrator and to say, okay, I want to deploy a virtual firewall service. And the service orchestrator then decomposes NSD, the description of the service, into the child SDT and also different type of VNFs, the, uh, the networks that are connecting the other VNFs and also the uh, VNF the basic deployment uh, unit that we use. And after that, the, uh, the, the service load the uh, other artifacts that's needed and at a different uh, template level. And then the third step, service orchestrator work with, uh, with the uh, OF the optimization framework and ask OF to give me, um, based on your knowledge, tell me that what's the best side to deploy this service, right? And so the OF optimization framework and get information from the uh, and AI, the active and uh, available inventory, and to know that what are the cloud available cloud instances is on the back end, it's running, and also check the capacities that different cloud is currently have and to support if the uh, there are special the uh, hardware uh, requirement from VNF, for example, different the uh, whether or not it needs a GPU, it needs the CPU pinning or the affinity rules that's needed. And also check the policy and some CVNF or some service may be uh, targeted for the, uh, for example, public cloud Azure, some may be for the internal, the hosted, the premises, the, uh, the cloud. And uh, then the, VO, um, the OF give back the uh, recommendation to the SO saying, okay, so for this uh, VNF, and that's so we recommend it to be deployed on the cloud number one. And so VNF as so SO gets the recommendations and work with the uh, multi mean layer and get the uh, uh, based on the cloud the ID of the number one and find the um, that the, uh, the the plugins and for this cloud number one for example maybe Azure maybe AWS maybe Kubernetes and for this number the cloud number one ID and then work with the uh, the plugins and the plugin get the artifacts and from the uh, uh, the uh, multi beam broker and uh, do the, uh, uh, whether it needs a sub, the uh, orchestration depends on the, uh, the need of the different clouds and requirement of different clouds. It may just give the heat template, for example, to OpenStack or the ARM template to the Azure, or maybe do the uh, template for level orchestration and give the uh, atomic the resource allocations and, uh, and to the uh, target cloud. So after that, the, uh, the VNF instance is the, uh, uh, deployed on the cloud itself. And what I didn't mention here is that so after VNF is instantiated and you will have uh, the application controller, AppC, will be able to take over the control and get information and AI monitoring uh, the uh, status, the utilizations, usage, and the performance, and all the other status, and through the DCAE collectors. And then to do, um, based on the a, a status, it may um, needs to, for example, reboot or scale or et cetera, et cetera, and for uh, 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 managing these life cycles of the VNF until it, it gets to the end of the life and it needs to be terminated, et cetera. So that's the uh, uh, basic um, how it works in ONAP. So last step, uh, or last, it is just the description about the uh, diagram itself. So it's, uh, um, so for the sake of time, so I only have one minute. And uh, so I just stop here and for uh, any question and they may ask. I'll be here, yeah. Yeah, I'll be here, yeah. Okay, okay. thanks a lot. Great, yeah, thank you.